Welcome to Inside the Summit League. South Dakota's off to a hot start right now in volleyball. We have the story from Vermillion on what the Coyotes have cooking there. Denver is off to a hot start in women's soccer. Still undefeated. They are moving up again this week in the national poll. And we've got lots of women's soccer coming up on the show. We will talk with Jeff Kolpak from the Fargo Forum. They have it cranking with facilities and football and men's basketball right now in North Dakota State. They love a winner in Fargo, and we'll talk about that with Jeff Kolpak. Let's get to the week that was. Summer League play starts next week in uh, volleyball, regular season play, and then it will run for eight weeks after that. Six of the eight teams this year, remember, will qualify for the postseason tournament in volleyball instead of the four that did last year. In the meantime, good pre-conference matches going on all over the place, and we've got highlights here from Western Illinois and Denver. Western Illinois played in the University of Iowa tournament over the weekend. They won two out of three matches, taking on Chicago State in this one. That is Ann Miller for the kill for Western Illinois. Great match for Sam Fournier. She had 16 kills and hit 464 in the match. That is Mallory Gibson off an assist from Sarah Fetter. Fetter had 46 assists. And then Heather Smith on the setup outside. Western Illinois would win this one in straight sets against Chicago State. Ann Miller. Again here, she had 10 kills. Western hit it 406 as a team. They beat Chicago State, they beat Illinois Chicago, and then lost to Ball State in that Iowa tournament. In Denver, the Denver Invitational. Denver taking on UCLA, the number 11 team in the nation in the coaches poll this week, but Denver had some highlights. Nola Basie, a freshman there with the kill. She had six of those. And then outside, Timoni Corihedu. She had 32 attacks in the match, put away 11 kills. And then a nice back set here from Bailey Karst and sets it up for Colleen King. The lefty hammers that. King had nine kills in the match. And then a slide set up here from Karst to Sarah Schmidt. Schmidt had six kills in the match. She hit 417 against UCLA. Great dig coming up here by uh, Basie, the freshman. Denver will get the point, but UCLA wins this match in three sets, 25-20, 25-22, and 25-18. Denver, though, came back on Friday against Creighton, another top 25 team. Uh, number 23 this week is Creighton. This match went five sets. Bailey Karst with the block there for Denver. Karst had 39 set assists, too. Goes uh, to Colleen King again. The senior had 16 kills against Creighton. Denver lost the first two sets. They won the next two. A kill here again by Sarah Schmid. It goes the distance in this one. Five sets and Creighton. Pulls it out over Denver in this one, 15-11 Denver in, uh, excuse me, Creighton in that fifth and deciding set. And you can always get all of the scores from all the sports on the Summit League website at thesummitleague.org. More volleyball when we come back. Uh, we go to Vermilion, concentrate on the Coyotes. What's going on with USD? They have the season off to a great start. Whether you're in pain on Friday or get hurt on Saturday, injuries can happen any day of the week. Now you can walk right in for expert care at Sanford Orthopedic Fast Track. We're the first to offer a walk-in clinic at four convenient locations, seven days a week with evening hours. Call 605-328-2663. Expert care when you need it. Sanford Orthopedic Fast Track. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Live it up at Grand Falls Casino Resort, where you can win, dine, and unwind. No, that's grand. Grand Falls Casino Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. Street comparisons in history. Abe Lincoln versus Babe Lincoln. American football fans versus Netherlands football fans. Angus Steaks versus Josie's Crab Cakes. You see, some people like to compare the features of the all-new 2013 Honda CRV to the Ford Escape. But if history has taught us anything, it's that the Honda CRV beats the Escape every time, with rates as low as 0.9%. See your local Dakota Land Honda dealer today to get a great lease on the all-new Honda CRV. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health. 
Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Well, the University of South Dakota volleyball team just missed the Summer League postseason last year, and hopes were high coming into this season because they had all kinds of talent coming back. Katie Lingle went to Vermilion to uh, see why the Yotes are just so darn optimistic about this season. Things are definitely moving at the right pace for the Coyote volleyball team, especially on offense. When we pass the ball well, we're trying to have it travel from setter to hitter at a really quick rate. It makes it tough to set up your block against us. If we were a football team, we're, we're trying to be Oregon maybe at times. I think the success comes from our pace that we have. Um, as a setter, I shoot the ball out to my hitters really with a really fast pace, and the passers get it up to me. This quick-paced offense has gotten the team off to a great start while helping senior setter Tori Kroll become the all-time leader in assists at USD. I'm just really excited to get that. That's a great accomplishment, but also I have to give credit to my hitters to getting the kills and the opportunity for me to get this. With experience from Kroll as well as a strong core of other returners, Coach Matt Houck acknowledges his team's experience. We've got a lot of veterans returning to our team. You know, we returned five kids who saw a lot of playing time last year. I think they have a lot of confidence in their ability. They had success at the end of the season last year. Um, and we played a tough uh, spring schedule this past spring, and they, they saw themselves compete really well at a high level. So I think they entered this season with a lot of confidence, and, uh, you know, maturity helps a lot. And after such a successful start, the Coyotes are hoping to ride their early success into conference play. Playing against big schools and knowing that we can compete against them and even take sets off of them definitely will give us confidence boosters in the Summit League to know that we are definitely good enough to play against them. When you know you've stepped on the floor against um, programs who've traditionally had success on the, you know, on the bigger stage, I think you walk into conference knowing that you've at least put in the work and the effort to give yourself an opportunity to have success. Well, the Coyotes played their 12th match of the season, but their first home match on Monday against North Dakota. And a big kill here from Kendall Crittenbrink. She was named the Summer League Offensive Player of the Week this week. Coyotes up 7-5, to five, but UND comes back with Ronnie Munkaby. She had 11 kills, and North Dakota comes in and takes the first set, 25-21. to 21. Looking to keep it rolling in the second, though. And Lisa Parlick with the kill. She had a team-high 13, and they were tied 6-6 in the second set. But then Crittenbrink and the Coyotes started to get it going. Uh, number 12 with another kill here. She had a match-high 18 kills for Crittenbrink. And then Melissa Furtko with one of her career-high 12 blocks coming up here for the Coyotes. USD takes the second set 25-19, and the Yotes go on, take the match 3-1. Well, the Oats get tested uh, this weekend. They play in the Wichita State Tournament. They will face two top 25 opponents. They face number seven, Hawaii, on Friday and number 23, Creighton, on Saturday. Well, it's been a slow start for men's soccer team so far in the Summit League. Just three wins in the first uh, 36 matches for the men. Have not been a lot of home matches, and granted, they're playing some pretty good opponents here in the pre-conference season. IUPUI is one of the league teams uh, trying to find themselves early on. Here are the Jags taking on Houston Baptist, a pretty good team that is playing in the whack this year. Well, this one started out promising for the Jags. First half, no score. Clint Hoffer centers to Gregory Effiem, but it doinks away there. Can't get anything going. The Jags had seven shots on goal. Couldn't get one through, though. Christian Soto wide right. Watch this corner kick by Houston Baptist, though. Perfect. And it's one to nothing Huskies at the half. Jags keeper Eduardo Cortez, Summit League keeper of the year last year as a freshman, but that was almost impossible. Houston Baptist goes up two to nothing. IUPUI gets a late goal, but they need to find some more offense. We had six chances to score goals, one on one with the goalkeeper. We didn't, we didn't score. When you don't score goals, you give the other team energy. That's what happened. We gotta find guys that can score goals. And the Jags have lost five in a row. Now we'll see if they can get it going this weekend. They play at Oakland and at Dayton. Coming up, we flip it over to women's soccer when we come back. Some great highlights coming up after this. Since 1982, the Summit League has been achieving excellence. Beyond providing a quality education to more than 120,000 students, the league continues to strengthen its reputation of being nationally competitive in athletics. Today, more than 3,000 elite student athletes at eight institutions embody the vision, purpose, and innovation the Summit League represents. 
these young men and women are reaching for the summit in both athletic and academic endeavors. Brief comparisons in history. Abe Lincoln versus Babe Lincoln. American football fans versus Netherlands football fans. Angus Steaks versus Josie's Crab Cakes. You see, some people like to compare the features of the all-new 2013 Honda Civic to the Toyota Corolla. But if history has taught us anything, it's that the Honda Civic beats the Corolla every time. With rates as low as 0.9%. See your Dakota Land Honda dealers today to get a great lease on the all-new Honda Civic. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Live it up at Grand Falls Casino Resort, where you can win, dine, and unwind. No, that's grand. Grand Falls Casino Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. Whether you're in pain on Friday or get hurt on Saturday, injuries can happen any day of the week. Now you can walk right in for expert care at Sanford Orthopedic Fast Track. We're the first to offer a walk-in clinic at four convenient locations, seven days a week with evening hours. Call 605-328-2663. Expert care when you need it. Sanford Orthopedic Fast Track. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health. Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Well, the University of Denver women's soccer team is up to number 14 this week in the national coaches poll. The Pioneers are 7-0. They beat Colorado 3-0 on Sunday. Kristen Hamilton uh, had two goals in that Colorado match. She is now the all-time career leader at Denver. She's got 43 goals in her college career. Elsewhere, some uh, great highlights this week, some fancy footwork and great goals from the Dakotas, and some great saves at IUPUI. In the All-Indiana matchup, Valparaiso at IUPUI. Sydney Rumpel for Valpo, just wide right. And the Jags come back, do the same thing at the other end. Callie Shepler Tucker gives it to Tori Menick, and that is wide right. Valpo on the corner, though. The header and the save by Nicole Kulovitz for the Jags in the match is still scoreless. Good chance here again for Callie Shepler Tuckler. The dribble, the shot, and the save, though. And then a couple of really good saves. Watch this one by Kulovitz for the Jags. Yes, denies that. And just as good at the other end, though, by Kristen Mansky for Valparaiso. There were nine shots on goal in the match. Nobody scores. Ends nil-nil. In Vermilion, South Dakota faced two teams from Omaha over the weekend. None of them were uh, the Omaha from the Summit League. They lost to Creighton on Friday and then came back and whipped the College of St. Mary's on Sunday. Danielle Anderson with her third goal of the season. And then Anderson to Jamie Karch, and that was fancy. The Coyotes up 2-1 to one at halftime. They add two more right away in the second half. Jenny Teslo, a senior from Sioux Falls. They steal in the score there. It's 3-1 to one Coyotes, and they finish it with an assist by Kylie Willer and a goal by Shannon Keller, a kid from Rapid City Stevens High School, and the Yotes win it 4-1. to one. They are 4-2-2 two two now on the season. In Macomb, Illinois, Western Illinois taking on Missouri State. No goals in this one until the 89th minute. Laura Atkinson, one of her three saves there for the Leathernecks. A good chance here for Sarah Hall, but that is denied. And a good chance again for Jordan Walgren. Bends that a bit too much, however, and it stays scoreless until late in the uh, match. Here's the only goal of the day, 88 minutes in. Missouri State from the corner, and they get that one to go. Western goes down one to nothing, and they go to four and three now on the season. In Grand Forks, North Dakota, UND hosting NDSU in a great match in this one. Caitlin Dahl for North Dakota from 30 yards out, just over the reach of Katie McCormick. And it is one to nothing, North Dakota at the end of the first half. Five goals in the second half of this match. A scramble in front, and Robin Wachowski will net it for North Dakota. And North Dakota leads it two to nothing. Sierra Bonham came in in the net in the second half for North Dakota State. Watch her do some work, stops the penalty kick, and then turns away the rebound as well. Nice work by Bonham, and then North Dakota State 
would get on the board. Olivia Norman with the setup there. Katie Tallis with the tally. And it is two to one, North Dakota in the lead. Soon to be three to one though. Zoe Foster steals that. And she is fast, gets that to go, makes it three to one. North Dakota led it four to one. North Dakota State would come back with a late goal by Megan Johnston right here. But UND gets its first win of the season. Four to two is the final. Speaking of North Dakota State, when we come back, a chat with Jeff Kolpak at the Fargo Forum. Is NDSU football down into the detriment of the other programs? We'll talk about that more with Jeff. Comparisons in history. Abe Lincoln versus Babe Lincoln. American football fans versus Netherlands football fans. Angus Steaks versus Josie's Crab Cakes. You see, some people like to compare the features of the all new 2013 Honda CRV to the Toyota RAV4. But if history has taught us anything, it's that the Honda CRV beats the RAV4 every time, with rates as low as 0.9%. See your local Dakota Land Honda dealer today to get a great lease on the all new Honda CRV. Whether you're in pain on Friday or get hurt on Saturday, injuries can happen any day of the week. Now you can walk right in for expert care at Sanford Orthopedic Fast Track. We're the first to offer a walk-in clinic at four convenient locations, seven days a week with evening hours. Call 605-328-2663. Expert care when you need it. Sanford Orthopedic Fast Track. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Live it up at Grand Falls Casino Resort, where you can win, dine, and unwind. No, that's grand. Grand Falls Casino Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health. Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Well, North Dakota State has been a strong Summit League member since they joined in 2007. Uh, the school is located in Fargo, the biggest city in the state. And Jeff Kolpak covers NDSU for the Fargo Forum, and he joins us now. And Jeff, uh, talk about a non-Summit League sport first. Football is dominant at North Dakota State, a two-time national FCS champions. And uh, does football in some ways dominate so much at NDSU that it is to the detriment maybe of some of the other sports? Yeah, you know, I guess you look at it in this respect that any time you win back-to-back -back national titles, and I don't know, no matter even if it's basketball or whatever, it's going to take a you know, that's going to take the thunder, so to speak. Um, you know, the uh, the season tickets for football are just off the charts. There's like a waiting list of 1,200 tickets this year. You know, and there's some football teams in, in the Missouri Valley Football League that probably don't even have a season ticket base of that. So. Um, to say it takes away, well, I guess it does a little bit. But on the other side, if uh, this community, I think, is it, it follows winners. You know, when volleyball was uh, uh, making that run in NCAA appearances, they were selling out Benson Bunker. Uh, when women's basketball was making those Division II title runs, they were drawing five, six thousand a game. You know, because they were good and entertaining, and and they were winning. So I. I uh, to simplify the answer, I think if, if, if you win, they will come. Well, each sport at North Dakota State really has their own place to play. The administration at NDSU has been very good about supporting uh, each individual sport with those facilities. Would you agree with that? Yeah, well, Benson Bunker is, is the old basketball arena, and it's been uh, remodeled over the years, and it's got a great floor, and it's perfect size for volleyball, too. I think you can put about 10, 1100 in there. And it gets pretty loud when things are cooking now the other piece of the puzzle is the bison sports arena that is slated to be renovated and actually um bids went out construction bids went out not too long ago and are due back here shortly so um you know that place needs to be bulldozed fast wants <laughs> to keep up with the summit and you know and some and just in the arms race of of college athletics in general it was built in 1971 and it feels like it's still 71 when you walk in there in some respects so uh, all right what is the timeline for the new basketball arena there to be completed 
we don't know. Uh, we don't know, meaning we, the media, or the general public doesn't know yet. I think a lot will depend on the construction bids that come in on budget or under budget. I think it's going to be a go right away. If they come in over budget, they might have to go back to the drawing board and figure something out. All right, and the women's soccer team started play this year at Dakota Field, the old football field. Right, and that was a, a nice move for the soccer program. They played in the track and field complex on the infield there, and the stands were just too far away. You know, you had the stands, and you had the track, then you had the long jump pit, <laughs> and then you had the field. So it just uh, you, you never got the feeling of being up close and part of the action. So uh, they took old Dakota Field where the Bison used to play football and renovated a section of those stands, renovated the press box, new scoreboard. There's already field turf. It's actually called sprint turf that – uh, the football team uses for practice, but um, uh, and it's working out too. I mean, the football team use it. Yes, it does. It also has another turf field that it can use for practice, in addition to two other grass practice fields. And soccer has been practicing at night. There are lights there, so it works out just fine. All right, and in volleyball, another young team. Uh, they actually took a set from nationally ranked Wisconsin last week. But what about the volleyball team for the Bison? Yeah, they're really young. I'm not sure this is the best year for them to be playing, you know, Wisconsin, teams like that, but I guess you don't have a lot of let's say in the schedule sometimes. I mean, these teams will come back uh, when they can come back. They're really young. They're, they're led by two um, freshman middle hitters uh, as far as kills, um, Emily Myron and Emily Minnick, a couple of North uh, Minnesota players. There's like seven Emilys on this team, I yeah. swear. But, um and, you know, they have a freshman setter. So if you have a freshman setter and, and freshman middles, you're going to have some growing pains. All right, and finally, a bit about men's basketball. Will North Dakota State uh, be the favorite going into the season this year to win the Summit League, even with Denver coming into the league this year with a great team and with Cody Larson now eligible to play at South Dakota State? Oh, I, I think they, they probably will be. I, I think Denver is going to be right up there. Uh, South Dakota State obviously is going to be right in there now with uh, – Cody transferring in and being eligible right away. The Bison have everybody back. They lost a backup guard, and that's it. And they have all their scoring back, all their playmaking back, all their inside guys back. And, you know, they have, what, four or five guys that have been here for four or five years, you know. They're like almost Social Security compared to some of those teams out there in, yeah. in Division One basketball. Or, you know, the majors who uh, bring a couple guys in and then they leave for the NBA. Uh, you know, that's the beauty of the mid-major is that uh, you can bring guys in, develop them, and you, you know, you're pretty sure you're not going to lose them to the NBA. All right, thanks to Jeff Kolpak at the Fargo Forum in men's basketball. And the Summer League is going to be great this year. Lots of great players. And uh, one of them, Chris Udofia at Denver, might be the Summer League preseason player of the year. He will take you on a tour of his school when we come back in the Campus Spotlight. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Live it up at Grand Falls Casino Resort, where you can win, dine, and unwind. No, that's grand. Grand Falls Casino Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. Street comparisons in history. Abe Lincoln versus Babe Lincoln. American football fans versus Netherlands football fans. Angus Steaks versus Josie's Crab Cakes. You see, some people like to compare the features of the all-new 2013 Honda CRV to the Ford Escape. But if history has taught us anything, it's that the Honda CRV beats the Escape every time, with rates as low as 0.9%. See your local Dakota Land Honda dealer today to get a great lease on the all-new Honda CRV. Whether you're in pain on Friday or get hurt on Saturday, injuries can happen any day of the week. Now you can walk right in for expert care at Sanford Orthopedic Fast Track. We're the first to offer a walk-in clinic at four convenient locations, seven days a week with evening hours. Call 605-328-2663. Expert care when you need it. Sanford Orthopedic Fast Track. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health. Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. 
Well, the Summit League got a good one when they went out and brought in the University of Denver this year. The school size and the athletic mission and everything else appear to be a great fit so far. And in our campus spotlight this week, two of Denver's top student athletes take you on a tour. Hi, I'm Chris Udofi on the men's basketball team. And I'm Nicolette DiGiacomo from the women's soccer team. Welcome to the University of Denver. Let us show you around. Hi, this is University Hall, the oldest building on campus. It dates back to the 1890s. And as you're about to see, the University of Denver is the perfect blend of the old and the new. The DU campus is situated on 125 acres just south of downtown Denver. The school has a total enrollment of just over 11,000 featuring students from the U.S. and 93 other countries. Over the past 16 years, DU has opened 19 new buildings on campus at a cost of more than half a billion dollars. The newest, the Anderson Academic Commons. The Anderson Academic Commons opened this past March and brings together DU Library and academic support services. Academically, Denver boasts a number of degree programs that are ranked nationally. The Sturm College of Law is among the top 65 in the nation. The Daniels College of Business is ranked in the top 25% of all business schools in the nation. The Corbell School of International Studies offers one of the world's best master's degree programs. And DU's Graduate School of Social Work is 26 in the latest national rankings. Athletically, the University of Denver has a rich tradition of success. DU has produced 28 national championship teams and over 300 All-Americans. And when it comes to facilities, the 440,000 square foot Ritchie Center is among the best in the nation. This is Magnus Arena, home of our men's and women's basketball teams, as well as our seven-time national champion hockey team. Also inside the Ritchie Center is Hamilton Gymnasium, home venue to pioneer volleyball and gymnastics. And right next door we have El Pomar Auditorium, home to DU's swimming and diving team. Outside the Ritchie Center is Cyber Field, a state-of-the-art soccer-only stadium, or as I'd like to call it, my home away from home. And last but not least, the Stapleton Tennis Pavilion. You'll find our men's and women's tennis team playing here daily. Thanks for joining us on our little tour of the University of Denver campus. We look forward to seeing you this season. Our thanks to everybody at Denver. Thanks to all of our member schools. We'll see you next week on Inside the Summit League.